Okay, well, it is seven o'clock, and I am calling this meeting to order. That's been fun. Um, so let's just look over the, I'm going to the agenda. <laughs> we'll do a roll call, and so I'll start um, Commissioner Andrews, or Edwards, I'm sorry, Nancy. Commissioner Edwards? Yes, here. Commissioner Miguel? Present. Uh, and Commissioner Broadnax? Present. And Commissioner Leitz? Present. Present. And it sounds like we, Commissioner Redmond is absent as well as Commissioner Miller. So, um, and do we have a motion to approve this evening's agenda? Make a motion. Motion. And second? I second. Oh. You can have it. All right, I'll right, go to Commissioner Edwards. Sure. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. And then approval of minutes. It looks like we've got two previous meeting minutes to approve. Um, so for, first, we'll need a motion to approve the minutes from our April 17th meeting. Um, so I just had something to note on the April 17th meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I was marked as not absent, but I second, seconded in the approval of minutes <laughs> for the March meeting. So I think there's an error somewhere there. Oh, staff, were you, were you there? <laughs> <laughs> you were not at the I, April meeting, but you were marked as passing a motion. Right. I don't okay. believe I was there. No. Okay. Um, yeah, I do not believe you were at the April meeting as well, because that's when we held elections and you were voted yep, in absentia. That's right. I was. I was also then too. So. Yeah. Yep. It was seconded by someone. But Wh not. Which item was seconded? Could you point that out? Um, so under four A oh, approval 4A. of minutes. It was um, noted that for the April 17th meeting. I don't see your name. On the packet that I have, um, page two. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I thought I was hearing uh, Commissioner Lates speaking. And then I look up and it was you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, got it. So I have to. Okay, who made that motion? Does anyone know? No, I'm kidding. I'll uh, figure that out. Thank you for pointing that out. Not a problem. Thank you for um, being so diligent in reviewing the meeting minutes. I, I didn't get to that. Um, so do we have a motion to approve the April 17th minutes as amended, or do we need, should we wait on that? No, we're ready to roll. We're ready to roll? All right. Do we have a motion then? Did somebody make a motion? I'll make a motion. All right. Commissioner Logan made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Broadnecks. All right. Oh, wait. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Um, then going on to approval of the meeting minutes from May 15th. Are there any adjustments that need to be made on those? Or they look good? I have a note. It, I think it mentions the... Acting chair per, or the uh, let me look at this uh, acting chairperson Brian, but uh, for the I think I saw that too. But chairperson Brian, but mm -hmm. you were absent. Correct. That meeting. I believe it was acting chairperson Redmond who okay. was calling the meeting to order and adjourning the meeting. Okay, well, it's good to know it was Commissioner Redmond who stepped in. Um, we should still be able to approve the minutes, though. So. Right, just okay. noting that as mm -hmm. a amendment. Mm -hmm. amendment. Yeah. Okay. Could you uh, repeat that, please? So the May 15th minutes. 
Uh, it mentions on the call to order and the... Um, oh, sure. It says Chairperson Brian called the meeting to order, but I wasn't hearing oh. Commissioner Redmond. Thank you. There we go, right there, first line. Again. Okay. And, uh, right. and the uh, adjournment as well. It says Chairperson Brian. Okay, adjourned. thank you. Good catch. That's what I get for um, copying and pasting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, again, thank you all for your diligence and looking things over. Um, so, uh, actually, since we, and I need clarification on this one, staff, um, there are three people absent at that meeting. Do we need to have, can we still make a motion to approve them, um, or should those that were absent abstain from voting to approve? Uh, I was just looking to see who was there, so it was uh, Commissioners Redmond, Miller, Lates, and Edwards. Um, no, I think you're good to go. Okay. Yeah. We, at we have at least two commissioners, and the rest of you can, of course, vote on it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, do we have a motion to approve the, as slightly amended, May 15th meeting minutes? I'll make a motion. All right. Made a motion made by Commissioner Leitz. Do we have a second? I will second that motion. Second by Commissioner Edwards. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Cool. So then let's move along. Um, we've got some unfinished business, uh, Madam Staff. There's some things to finish up on, a uh, Gold Leaf Project update. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair and members of the commission. So tonight we are going to start digging into our climate actions that we outlined from uh, the Gold Leaf Pilot Project. So I have a short presentation, and I'll go into background on the Gold Leaf Project, and then uh, our climate mitigation planning process, and then uh, Taylor, who is with us here tonight, Taylor Matheson, she is a um, undergraduate student from the University of Minnesota, and when she's up, she can tell you about her degree and... Uh, but she is working with us as um, an intern, um, which was uh, part of this Gold Leaf Pilot Project. Um, so there's several students now working for the various cities that are in this pilot project throughout the summer. So welcome, Taylor. And uh, I'm going to dig dive right in here to our background on the Gold Leaf Project. So you all probably know that Maplewood is a green step city. And uh, we have been participating in this program since 2010. That is actually when Green Step Cities program began. The MPCA rolled that out. And Maplewood was one of the first uh, adopters uh, participating in that program. So um, the program is really a, a voluntary program for communities. Um, there's probably about, uh, off the top of my head, 200 Minnesota communities now that are participating. and. What um, it's based on are different uh, sustainability best practices that um, they get. They offer guidance and uh, kind of um, peer um, programs to help you along as you're making improvements uh, to work on your sustainability within your municipal and citywide. And then you um, report on those best practices, and once you achieve a certain number of best practices, you, you're awarded with a new step. And then um, for step five, which the city of Maplewood has been awarded, which is the highest um, acknowledgement in the program currently, we uh, were part of that pilot project back in 2016, so we, we started and, and helped out kind of creating that step five. But what the city does now in all cities that are step five, which I believe there's about 20 of those 200 some cities, they and we measure each year our sustainability metrics. So as an example, we would report on the number of trees that we plant in our public right-of-ways or in our parks, on the number of um, rain gardens we install, uh, our greenhouse gas emissions, you know, we base that off of uh, the base line, which we started um, monitoring that in 2016. You know, so these are the sort of things that you measure. And then each year, if you improve upon at least three of those core metrics, they call them, then you're awarded the step five again. So the League of Minnesota Cities, actually, hey, 
guess what? We're being awarded that award tonight, right now, as we speak, up in Duluth, and the mayor, right, why aren't we there? <laughs> the mayor, mayor, Mayor Abrams, is there to accept that award at the League of Minnesota Cities Conference. So that's a huge honor. And um, so then you ask, well, we've been a step five since 2016. What's the next step? And so the MPCA has also been working on that. You know, how can we continue to help cities um, find a pathway to sustainability and also their climate actions now? And so they're creating this gold leaf program. And kind of the premise here where the green steps um, you'll see our award, it's, it's in that case behind that, in the, in the back of the room here. But each year with a different step, um, our award keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and so now we have all, all these steps. So <laughs> we're running out of room. Um, but with the uh, Gold Leaf pilot, pr or, or eventually with the Gold Leaf program, they'll have, it'll, it's kind of based off of a tree, and then when you achieve certain climate actions, you get a gold leaf to add to your tree. So the uh, pilot program, there are 12 communities participating in that, or 11, I should say, and uh, one tribal nation. And um, it is running from February until September of this year. And we have uh, check-ins, you know, weekly to kind of bounce off ideas from the other communities. What are you doing? How are you doing it? What kind of grants are you, you know, looking into? So that peer guidance is really uh, very beneficial. And then they're offering us resources such as an intern. So Taylor is working with us um, seven hours a week, um, mainly virtually. And then because we're a larger community, I think they decided to split Taylor's time between us and Rochester. So she can give us some good, good info on Rochester. Um, and her internship will go until mid-August. So we brought the 42 action, climate action items that were outlined in the Gold Leaf pilot program because they say, hey, take a look at these 42. And as part of this program, we would like you to start working or commit to working on at least two of these. So the Environmental Commission and our green team, which is, of course, um, made up of employees uh, from each department, mainly working on um, our sustainability within our city operations. Um, both of you looked at this and narrowed it down to these two items. Climate mitigation planning, which is the next step in our climate action plan. We have the climate adaptation piece, which was adopted in 2021. And that now is helping us um, deal with, um, you know, the changes we're seeing in our climate, the, the, the flooding that we see, the, the heat that we see, the air quality issues that we're seeing that are likely due to our changing climate. So that adaptation plan is in place. Now the next step is a mitigation plan, which will help us reduce our greenhouse gases um, so we stop, you know, um, adding to this problem. And um, that would be both in our city operations and citywide. So that's the first item we're going to start working on. And then our green building code. This is a code that all um, publicly funded buildings in Maplewood have to comply with. It has higher energy efficiency standards than state code. And the reason the city can require this is because they're getting public funding. So. Um, this was adopted in 2013, and now we have um, at least five or six buildings that were built under the code, so we have some experience as, as to how that's working. Plus, the key piece that uh, the Environmental Commission and the Green Team would like to look at as part of this is a requirement for EV charging stations um, or EV-ready parking spaces and uh, renewable energy requirements to see how we can put that into our code so you know all these new buildings that we're seeing, at least the ones that are funded publicly, um, we can require these be built right in. So we're going to start with the climate mitigation planning, and um, I will cover this. So as I indicated, the action plan includes the adaptation and the mitigation. And we thought we'd um, 
<clears throat> roll out the mitigation planning uh, throughout the summer and fall with education and outreach. Um, and it's really good timing now that we have Taylor and she can attend some of these summer events and do some outreach. And then uh, similar to our climate adaptation planning process, we'll work with stakeholders um, like the county, watershed district, our council, some, uh, some of our environmental commissioners will likely be on this. Um, and, and that's when we really start looking at that outreach material, the surveys, the, the comments, the feedback, and then also you know, digging into creating this draft plan. And so that'll likely start next year. So um, what we'd really like to get some feedback on tonight is a survey that we're going to be releasing here July 1st. And you have that in your packet. Um, that starts on, well, I should say, that is agenda item 5A. And it's the first attachment. And I don't want to just read all the questions, but um, I would really appreciate your feedback. So um, I'll just start with the first page, and then, and then we'll, I'll pause and see if you have any comments. But I won't go into all of them. So you know, we start with, help the city of Maplewood come up with strategies that will reduce greenhouse gas emissions citywide and in city operations. And then we do require at least an email to get started. And then the first question, how much do you agree with the following statement? It is important for Maplewood to take action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from energy use or land use. And then you can see the various comments. Can I just ask a background question, mm -hmm. I guess, on the intent of the survey? I know you mentioned, um, I guess, two things stuck in my mind um, about either kind of the brainstorming behind it or an education piece. Are you hoping to understand like with a position that some of the maybe residents in Maplewood are coming from with this or get an idea of what's the most important thing climate wise that they would like us to tackle or is it both? Uh, very good comments and um, also like who's our audience, right? Yeah. That's really what you're supposed to start with when you're doing a survey and, and your audience can't just be the general public I was told. <laughs> But mainly, I think, during our outreach, we'll probably be getting, be getting at um, Maplewood residents. So number one, they're our audience. Uh, number two, we would really like to gauge, um, number one, their understanding of climate change. And number two, um, the things that are important to them that they'd like to see the city uh, work on to improve upon that. Sure. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So that first question, any comments on that? I just have a question and a comment, but question as for the survey as a whole, is it gonna be offered in other languages besides English? Uh, we should definitely make that an option. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then my comment was um, getting into kind of the, the weeds, if you will. Um, for the selection options, um, mark only one oval. Um, this will be all online, I assume, correct? Correct. And okay. then uh, at some of these outreach events, we'll also have a hard copy, you know, in the event okay. they that's, have difficulty. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. It sounded like hard copy, but uh, it still gets to the point, so. Okay, that's all I had for that page. So here we want them just to... Mark one oval. Any comments from that? No. Nope. Okay. There. All right, I'll move on. Uh, the second page. How much do you agree with the following statement? Maplewood should be a leader when it comes to proactively addressing climate change. Please select the following transportation actions you would support or engage in. And then uh, it says check all that apply and there's several, probably about 10, things like, I would ride the bus if it ran more frequently and during more hours of the day. Excuse me. So there's quite a few to look at there. Yeah, I have one comment. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we might consider uh, for the 
the option of uh, create EV friendly building codes. If we might consider rewording that to fit with the language of the other selections where it says I would or I would like um, something like um, I would support the creation of. Got it. Yeah. And this just kind of hit, hit me too, but maybe um, I know for folks in the industry, like EV is a common ab abbreviation acronym that people are familiar with, but spelling out electric vehicle oh. might help. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have one more just kind of question mm -hmm. comment, um, which gets a little bit to the intent um, of the question, but um, I think if you were hoping to understand what's important to them, it might be worth considering for this question and the next one, um, having them rank them. Um, if you get a bunch of people in your audience who are really pro just climate action, you might end up with a survey full of yes marks to a lot of things that will be difficult to discern what is the most important thing to some of these, some of the respondents. Very good point. Yeah, so here we're saying check as many as you wish, and your comment would be really you should rank them, at least maybe or check the first two. three. Yeah. Yeah, check your, yeah. <clears throat> I agree. Um, also just noticing now that there's a, a redundancy, there's a check as many as you wish, and then below it is check all that apply. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then for the third option, I would walk or ride a bike at least once uh, per week, once more per week if I felt safer. Um, just wondering if we could expand upon the reasoning of why they might want to ride a bike more than once per week. Maybe it's not a safety issue. Maybe there's another issue. But I unfortunately don't have a recommendation on well, how to clean that up, but it's just something that... Um, I, I, I would ride or I would walk or ride a bike for recreation or to the store or something. Is that what you mean? If I felt safer? I think I'm, I'm hung up on the if I felt safer mm. for, part. Um, there, that might not be a reason why they're not riding a bike more. It might not be a safety issue. It could mm. be something else. I'm hung up on the I would walk or ride a bike more if I felt safer. Well, would you walk or ride a bike more if you felt safer doing it as a commute where you're within traffic? Or is this, like you said, with, for recreation? So is being uh, able to parse those two things out because you can't, you have to specify for work purposes or for recreation, I think, just because right, there's multiple reasons to go out for a bike. Yeah, so you could read that, boy, I would take my bike to work, but I think I wouldn't last a minute in that traffic. You know, and it's not safe. Or mm -hmm. I would go for a bike ride in my neighborhood on that trail at 7 p.m., but I'm afraid someone scary will be on the trail. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a closer look at that one. I'll move on. Please select the following building actions that you would support or engage in. Check as many as you wish. Check all that apply. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to say check up to three. Your top three or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a question overall for the survey. For the, the questions, it has a, it numbers the questions, and then there's another number before the, um, the actual question. Is that a? Oh. Uh, um. I had to, uh, things got goofy when I transposed it from the form, so mm -hmm. it's not really like that. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'll make sure the numbers are correct. I don't know what's going on there. Because this was in a Google, whatever, doc. Form, and yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had a PDF of it, and it got weird. Mm -hmm. Things got weird. Um, just a question for the option of it would be beneficial for me to know the energy score of a house before buying it. How would we, what kind of program would that 
would there be to get that energy score? Uh, I cert I do know that um, Excel Energy, as part of their home energy squad mm -hmm. uh, visits, they'll they'll give you if you have the enhanced visit where mm -hmm. they do the blower door test and all that. Mm -hmm. They give you an energy score. Right. Okay. So I was thinking more so, like it would come along with like a truth and sale housing report. Um, like all, for example, houses in Maplewood had the Tish as well as like a home energy audit. So we could add that as an example. Okay. The yeah. city could add that to our requirement, which we do have in Maplewood. Truth, truth and housing. Yep. Yep. It's just a form. Uh, they usually have to hire a contractor. Mm -hmm. Costs about sixty bucks. I think it's a great or idea. So. And then uh, they have to leave it when your house is for sale so that all the buyers can see that. Mm -hmm. Like if there's issues with the house, mm -hmm. it's not a requirement to fix anything. It's just um, mm -hmm. obviously to let people know. Yeah. I definitely wish I knew before I bought my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in Maplewood, so yeah. maybe you didn't refer to your truth in housing. I did the truth in housing, but not the energy. energy oh, is that parking. what you mean? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm looking at two of the responses, and to me, they read very similar. Um, and I know there's a difference between the two, but for the general public, I think some people might say, well, this kind of could be included in the part of this one. And it's the city should require higher sustainability standards in new construction projects. And then the following question is the city should require renewable energy in new construction projects. And there's a possibility that could be read that the renewable energy is a sustainability standard. Right. So um, I maybe just changing the order and not having those two right next to each other will lead to some less confusion. I'm not sure. Or um, Right, and what sustainability standard is pretty broad. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Um, please select the following energy actions you would support or engage in. And we'll say check check your top three. Um, for the I'd support Excel Energy in establishing a goal for one hundred percent renewable electricity for all customers. Um, wondering if we should add like a time frame within 50 years, 25 years, because um, say we put on there within 100 years, well, I'd probably have more things that are more important than them trying to get 100% renewable within 100 years. Good point. Hopefully that's not the case, but. I also comment. I'm I'm wondering if the suggestion for this one to um, check just three, if that might deter people from certain options about like I would pay a little bit more for a subscription for solar power, or I'd be willing to pay more. I wonder if those questions would be less likely to be considered if. <laughs> if we're like just, I'll check if we're it just, if someone else is if it's on someone else's <laughs> dime. Yeah. Hmm. Right. So I don't have a good uh, solution for that one, but just <laughs> something to note. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, all of these kind of relate to, well, who's paying for this? I don't know. Then I'll check it. But this one is clearly, you're going to pay for it. So no one's going to check that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll modify that question a bit. Please select the following waste reduction actions you would support or engage in. are all good I think 
Aren't, a car, aren't apartment complexes required to offer recycling already? Yes, that is a state law. Um, and then do we have something in here on, oh, food recycling, yeah. Could you remind me again when that will be fully rolled out for the community? Uh, the pilot project is undergoing now in South Maplewood and they don't give us a specific date, but um, possibly end of year or next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything, maybe businesses? Let's see. Something about businesses? Yeah. I'm going to add something, add something about business. Mm -hmm. It would be the phase out of single use plastic bags at stores. It would be a business, business y kind of. Yeah, that would be one. All right. What other actions would you like to see done to reduce citywide greenhouse gas emissions? And that's an open ended question. Mm hmm. Do you think people will know what that means? Reduce, maybe reduce pollution and greenhouse gas? Just, or just kind of change to general things that impact our climate or something like that. How would you like to be involved in creating a plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Maplewood? Um, I noticed for the last option, it, just, it says just online surveys, but if they only wanted to participate in online surveys, I think they would just check the one box. You don't have to say just. Is right. that what you mean? Yeah. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could I sneak back to the last question as mm -hmm. well? Yeah. Um, I think that might also be that question or around there might be a good opportunity. Um, I think a lot of this survey may potentially be assuming the entire population is very on, has no hesitancy about some of these actions and to maybe inform the education opportunity. It might ben benefit to have a question that's like, what are you hesitant about with some of these? Um, actions or what are you concerned about um, just so that the survey is also collecting information maybe mm -hmm. that can give give us information to to address those concerns or to to understand where that may may sit so just a general open-ended question about that may, may be a good spot right there where we already have an open-ended question good point thank you and then uh, our green team looked at this, and um, it was actually Taylor's suggestion. She learned in one of her classes, smarty pants, <laughs> that um, people are more apt to fill out the demographics if they're at the end of the survey. So here we are. Because in the beginning, you're like, ooh, you're only asking this because I'm such and such, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But here, they're like, I already answered it. Sure, why not? But basically, we're just asking, are you a resident of the city of Maplewood? Do you rent or own your home? Do you work or own a business in the city of Maplewood? What age category describes you and your race ethnicity? And so those are the, that, those are the last questions in the survey. Wondering if in including a, an additional demographic question on how general household size would be of benefit knowing if is this a one or two person household or a multifamily household because we do have quite a few of those within the city and mm -hmm. whether or not the number of people make any mm -hmm. difference. I um, If it's something that, you know, a single person or a professional couple versus you know, a family of 
four or five kids, are they going to be will, more willing to do some of these things, kind of if that has any impact on the, um, what people are willing to do? Uh, number of vehicles, is that something that's important? I know the census has some of that data. Okay. Well, thanks for your review on that. Appreciate that. Um, it helps to vet it that way, and then uh, mm -hmm. our communications likes to see that we've all kind of had a hand in it. So moving on with our presentation here, I'll call us back to the screen. But um, the items that you see in your packet next are some examples of um, educational components that we can use. And if I could get that sur uh, presentation up again, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. So um, these were created by Pale Blue Dot, who, of course, um, Commissioner Redman is a co-founder of. Um, so he's working on this with the city of Maplewood. He did these just kind of pro bono, so we really appreciate that. So this is kind of a first blush of what we could use. Um, I think there was one back here. No, okay. So this is a banner. So what we'd like to do is um, kind of create a, uh, a kit that we can bring to all of these events, kind of a pop-up kit, you know, like grab the climate mitigation planning pop-up kit. And so this would be a banner, you know, zoop, you just roll it out. Um, so take a look at this and let us know if you have any thoughts on, we would like to come up with kind of a snappy uh, title or a tagline, which we'll get into in a minute. I just have a general question. Um, as far as the surveys in the past for, I guess, anything envir environmentally related or citywide, does it generally go to our consultant's website versus the city website? Because um, I scanned the QR code and it just went to pale blue dot. Oh, yeah. So um, we will modify this so it goes directly to the city's website. Okay. And then Great. Um, as part of pale blue dot's work, uh, he'll all, they will also have a landing page with some detail. Okay. So, But I, I, I agree it should go to the city's page mm -hmm. first. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Or actually... We'd like it just to go to the survey right now. I think right now it brings you to that landing page. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried that, so I appreciate you looking at that. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that I, do that. Uh, <laughs> I do that with all QR codes that we send out, so just make sure that they're accurate. <laughs> but we've, um, in my role, unrelated, ah. have, have made mistakes on that in the past. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like, I guess... Yeah. <laughs> right. Have, haven't had check that the one link. <laughs> no, check the QR code. Yeah. You kids, I don't know. It's hard to keep up. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, okay, that's a good. Yeah, we'll make sure it goes to the city. But I think in this case, you just want it to go zip right to the survey. You, you know, we don't want mm -hmm. the, them to have to read through all this stuff. Where's the link to the survey? Yeah. Right. So is that QR code within the community events going to be the only page or only method for that people can access a survey or are they like what if someone's there and they forgot their phone in the car, you know, how can they access the survey when they're at the event? We'll have some hard copies there. Okay. And then, um, you know, as we all other ways that will identify this uh, will be through a link, you know, mm -hmm. um, like if it's in an article, it will have a link. Mm -hmm. um, any other way that we should do this? No. Can't a link on the website too, probably. Yeah, yeah, website. You know, in our social media, be, mm -hmm. a, be a link. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, this would be kind of a, Oh, oh, that's the banner. I guess same mm -hmm. same concept. Mm -hmm. One one was a flyer. I guess on that uh, the handout, we really should also have. Oh, I guess there is there will be there is now a link, but we'll change that to the city of Maplewood, obviously. 
Um, is this eye catching? Uh, see anything that these are the colors of Maplewood, you know, our, our, our brand, our logo of sorts, the maroon. I think I just have like a, maybe overly, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but the action plan to reduce greenhouse gas emission reductions feels funny. Reduce and maybe then reductions. Guide yeah. Greenhouse gas mm -hmm. re emission reductions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we say guide again, so I'll, I'll ch Oh, Modi yeah. I'll, mod I'll yeah, modify. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I'll make it work. Thank you. Short and sweet. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Double negative. <laughs> and then finally, this is a lot of words. I don't even know why. I This is in your packet, um, and it's just proposed for kind of a. I'm going to skip past that. No, I don't think I saw that. <laughs> I'll figure that out. I just put it in for filler. Oh, yeah, so taglines, what do you think? Uh, Taylor and I came up with a few of these. Ooh, I like that. That could be our logo. No, the logo should be the maple leaf with the sunglasses. Oh. And it has to be those like pixelated meme sunglasses that get dropped. <laughs> <laughs> what kind? Oh, did you see those sunglasses too? The line that's hard to read. Yeah. Did you say with this? Never mind. It's for you kids, <laughs> I gotta go home and talk to my 18 year old. You have an intern to explain these oh, things that's right. to you. Thank you. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk offline. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so that one sticks out to you. Keep Maplewood cool. I like that one and also raise your voice, not the temperature. I don't have any cool logo. You know, it could be though. Keep Maplewood cool. Raise your voice, not your temperature. Because, you know. Mm -hmm. Raise your voice, not your temperature. Not the temperature. Yeah. I think it was right. And then the raise your voice, not the temperature, and keep me cool. Oh. Mm. Gotcha, yeah. All right. Any other things you're, you're coming up with? Something that popped in your mind? All right, cool, cool, cool. We'll forget that. All right, moving on. So thank you for your comments on um, that climate uh, planning. So um, Taylor and I, and we hope to engage our environmental commission as well, and perhaps our green team on some of the upcoming events that we could um, do some outreach on this. So more on that later. But now we're gonna focus on um, our second climate action that we have committed to working on. It's this green building code. And I will introduce it and then uh, Taylor's gonna just go into some of the research she's done on some of the existing green building frameworks out there and um, the EV uh, charging station and renewable energy requirements some of the cities have in their codes. And then we'll just kind of stop there and it'll just be kind of your introduction to the code, what it is. And this will probably take us about six months to a year, you know, with any kind of code revision once you start digging into it. So this Maplewood Green Building Code, this was adopted in 2013 and we based this code on the 2012 International Green Construction Code, and that's for the commercial components, and then the residential projects are based off of this National Green Building Standards, and they're these big thick books, and um, what you can do 
is um, communities can adopt the full code or just sections of it. So it's really um, our building official at the time that um, kind of came up with this idea of adopting this particular framework for a green building code uh, said it's really adaptable to you know communities because you can pick and choose some of the sections that that are important and meet your community's goals. <coughs> so we have, um, I think about, like I said, five or six um, buildings that have been constructed under that code. The first one was the South Maplewood Fire Station, which is down by 3M. And then um, most recently was the North Fire Station, which was constructed up by the mall. And then there are a few uh, apartment complexes that were constructed under this code because they had tax increment financing. And what we found with some of those, now that we have some experience, from what I understand from our new building official and our community development department, is that um, there's some exemptions in the code that have allowed some of the um, developments that we thought would have to comply with this to find a way out. So eventually we'll like to look at those exemptions and see how we can kind of modify that. But what we'd uh, like to focus on tonight um, is how we can add EV charging stations or EV ready parking spaces as well as renewable energy requirements in this code and maybe a general code. Um, and I had heard that the Department of Labor is, uh, is that right, Department of Labor? Who's ever, whoever refused the, um, the building codes and brings it to the legislature for adoption, they're trying to implement a, like a statewide EV charging ready parking spaces in some of these codes. So, you know, m maybe eventually it'll be a state requirement, uh, but right now we have several examples of cities that are doing it. So. I am going to now pull up a presentation that Taylor put together, and it's based on the research she conducted, which is also um, in your packet on that last page. So give me a moment here. Um, Taylor, welcome. Yeah. Um, so I'm Taylor. I'm a junior majoring in fisheries, wildlife, and conservation biology with a minor in horticulture. Um, is there anything else you want me to mention? Um, I'm, yeah, I live in St. Paul. Um, I applied to be in the Clean Energy Leaders Program, which is how I got this internship. Um, and yeah, so uh, all of these cities, their codes are based off of LEED certifications and requirements. Um, so that, yeah, uh, St. Paul's sustainable building policy applies to pretty much every development possible with municipal, commercial, multifamily, single family, industrial, and parking, um, and also with projects where the installation of mechanical ventilation or cooling systems are involved, um, and then financial assistance, assistance of more than $200,000 um, also needs to comply to this code, and then the ParkSmart minimum silver certification is required as well. Um, there's overlay requires the use of renewable energy. Um, it's pretty low, they just require at least 2% of the annual energy coming from on-site uh, renewable systems like wind or solar. And their electrical vehicle charging, um, they need at least 20% of parking spots 
to allow for future charging uh, so they don't even need to uh, have it as it's being developed. And then anything with less than five spots just needs to have at least one charging space. So St. Louis Park's green building policy affects municipal, commercial, and industrial of over 15,000 square feet, as well as multifamily and single family. Um, the renovations of municipal, commercial, and industrial of over 50,000 square feet, again, also have to comply. And then private developments with over $200,000 of financial assistance needs to uh, follow the rules as well. Um, the electric vehicles for uh, requirements for St. Louis Park depend on the number of spaces in the lot or ramp. Um, generally more than 15 spaces is what's important and then it's kind of divided into residential and non-residential. Um, and in residential it's required that there are level one stations and then level two stations are required for the non-residential uh, parking spaces and then it kind of goes into uh, percentages of spaces and everything. Rochester Sustainable Building Guidelines uh, affects municipal, commercial, multifamily, single family, and industrial, as well as any tax funded project. And they go a little more into uh, renewable energy and like what specific source will uh, generate for the percent of the annual electricity with solar generating at least 75%, wind with at least 50%, and then geothermal with 50% as well. And they are hoping to be 100% renewable by 2030, so I believe that's why uh, the percentages are so high, um, just to kind of get that moving. Um, their electric vehicle requirements um, say that there needs to be at least one space for every 25 spaces when there's more than 50 in the lot or ramp. And then the spaces also have to be marked with signs to say that they are exclusively for electric vehicles. And then they must also have at least a level two charging station. Um, Duluth follows the sustainability standards uh, with municipal, commercial, industrial of over 10,000 square feet and then multifamily with more than three units and single family. And theirs was like the most in-depth also covering um, passive solar, which I didn't see in any of the other ones. So um, yeah, this one is a lot of information, but it's mainly just that a certain percent of the development's electricity needs to be renewable. Um, certain residences have to have solar panels installed or pre-wired for solar panels. And then the passive solar goes into um, the orientation of buildings and um, saying that non-residential buildings will need to have one longer axis that's oriented east-west for maximum solar potential. And then their electric vehicle requirements was a little shorter, just saying that at least 2% of the spaces need to be reserved and also have to be within a certain uh, distance of the main entrance of whichever building it's for. Um, Edina also follows the sustainable, sustainable building policy. Um, pretty much all of the developments um, and then certain square footage for the additions and any installation or replacement of HVAC systems must follow the code. The ParkSmart minimum silver certification as well, and then anything funded by the city or HRA, or the de any developments requesting planned unit development approval. Their uh, code went specifically into electric vehicles and nothing about renewable energy, but they require at least 15% of spaces having electric charging with 
level two or higher stations making up at least 5% of those spaces. And if not, a conduit should be installed so that at least 10% of spaces can have the stations installed later. Northfield, the sustainable building policy again, affects just about everything and certain additions of different square footage, the HVAC systems again, the Park Smart certification, and then theirs kind of goes more into um, the financial assistance again with more than $300,000 of assistance having to follow and then any projects with funding of 150,000 to just below 300,000 either have to comply or prove that they can't. And theirs was also pretty short, which isn't really shocking, um, just because it's a smaller city. Um, they just require an evaluation for on-site renewable potential, uh, making sure that at least 2% of the energy load could be provided by on-site renewables. Uh, any questions of Taylor on these on this research? N nicely done, and I just want to thank you for putting this together. Uh, one thing I did notice among all the cities that you had chosen, they're within either a certain distance of the Twin Cities metro area or a more developed professional community. And I'm curious if there were some other of the cities that you researched that were more in more rural areas that they have various building standards on that you were able to find? Or what, were these just the ones that had the only areas that were made available that you could find? I did not look into other cities. I was basing my research off of a document that Kristen had sent me. Um, Great Plains Institute? Yeah, the Great Plains Institute. <laughs> had a document, um, just kind of went into, I think it was the seven cities. Um, so I kind of just looked more into that and, yeah. Uh, I, also I also believe these are um, cities that have identified these as a best, as a sustainability best practice in the Green Step cities. Um, I attended um, a Gold Leaf um, was something that was put on by Excel Energy, and it had several cities involved in Gold Leaf, and um, learned of a few more communities, so Taylor and I will work on looking at those. One was a little bit uh, more rural, um, La Crescent, yeah. So there are some examples. I have a contact at La Crescent, too. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Uh, again, thank you, and I um, totally fine if you don't know the answer to this, but just curious, I feel like Rochester had some pretty ambitious goals, and I think it's great, but wondering how successful they are in getting meeting those renewable energy goals on a site. I feel like it'd be pretty constrictive without like a variance or anything like that. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure, but... Okay. Like Sean said, I am working with mm -hmm. them as well in the internship, so yeah. maybe I'll find out yeah. eventually. I'd be interested. Yeah. Did you say this was a fairly new code? Because they hardly had any info on their website about it? Yeah, it seems like it. Um, or I don't know if I was searching it wrong, but mm -hmm. um, Lauren ended up just sending me a link. And oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was buried in their website. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. So you can see um, most of these codes have a requirement for uh, public financing, mm -hmm. but if to a certain like um, amount, but then they also have a component of it if it's just new, right? It seems to be. So. I was wondering about the legality of that because um, I do recall some pushback from the Department of Labor uh, when Minneapolis first proposed such a code. 
and it had something to do with you know if our if the state building code doesn't require it you can't require it above and beyond mm -hmm. which you know is why we in Maplewood were allowed you know to require energy efficiency requirements above and beyond current state levels because it's uh, for buildings that are publicly funded mm. so we're going to do some more research into all that any other questions or comments on the green building code okay. well thank you again taylor for putting that together it's been, you did a very nice job of doing all that detailed uh, research thank you okay yeah. well um Yeah, we'll just wrap up this uh, section okay. and uh, just to say um, we'll continue on to work on these two climate actions um, in particular uh, you'll see more of the green building code okay. items coming back to your commission and then the climate mitigation um, will work with Taylor and then uh, make sure and let the Commission know about opportunities to do education and outreach sounds good so thank you All right. Well, um, I think we can continue on. Do we have any new business? I don't see anything listed on the agenda. Um, so then continuing on visitor presentations. Doesn't look like there are any visitors. Uh, any commissioner presentations? All right. Well, then back to you, staff, for some staff reports. share a fun picture with you here on the on the overhead um, this was our Waterfest event which was held what beginning of June on a Saturday and uh, thank you to the commissioners that attended that event and helped uh, with the planning um, so we focused on um, be friendly lawns and and how you know simple ways that people can create more pollinator friendly yards and lawns mainly with like overseeding and uh, planting things like clover within your existing turf so there's the crew thank you everyone uh, any comments from any of the commissioners that attended Um, it wasn't as busy as the year before. Um, I think it was just so hot, wasn't it, that day? Really hot. And those demonstration plants that you received from the U of M, they, they were really beneficial. So thanks for getting those and all the, the seed. Um, so then following up on that, do we have any kind of thank you cards or anything that we could send to the university staff? Um, ah, Good idea. Okay. Um, and maybe even include the very nice picture of Commissioner Edwards and Miller. Yes. I'm going to put my intern on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you'll send I'll me the contact. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Good idea. Thank you. Okay. Um, then that's it for uh, the slides. I think we can get off of our presentation there. Thank you. But um, I did want to give you an update on some of the upcoming events. Uh, the first one is July 4th, the Light It Up event held at Hazelwood Park. And um, Taylor has offered to attend that for a few hours and do some outreach on this climate mitigation planning. Uh, I'll be there as well, mainly before the event, um, kind of setting up and things, things like that. But the event is from 4 until... 11 fireworks go off at 10 so I'll send out details and if you're up for helping out at the booth it's a Tuesday this year uh, July 4th the next item is uh, July 26 which is celebrate summer so our parks and uh, recreation department well we're called parks and natural resources now um, put on at least three or four summer events and there's a lot of fun things to do we hold them at different parks throughout Maplewood. Um, this one is, uh, hmm. oh, I think it's in Afton Park, uh, which is South Maplewood. And 
yeah, there's a fun activities, there's games, uh, probably bouncy houses, things like that, and hot dogs will be served, and um, it's a fun kind of family event, and it's a really good opportunity to do outreach there as well. And then finally, National Night Out, which of course are uh, private neighborhood parties or parties within a church or something like that throughout our community, and that's on uh, Tuesday, August 1st. So people do sign up uh, their party to have dignitaries attend, mainly police and fire is what they're looking for, but uh, they do make those parties um, public, so we could focus on a few parties, and um, our environmental commission in the past has gone to parties and done some education. Usually if you bring goodies, they're just so happy to see you, you know. So those are a couple upcoming opportunities this summer for education and outreach, and I'll send a follow-up email on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, staff. Um, that brings us to the end of the agenda. Do we have a motion to adjourn for the evening? There must be a couple ones. <laughs> there we go. I'll make a motion. All right, we've got a, commo we've got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We are officially adjourned at 8.05.